Good evening and welcome to ATV News. My name is Shalama Lawson. On today's bulletin, the circumcision debate rages on in Zimbabwe. Guadana Clinic remains incomplete 13 years after it was built. Dombovzvugu Primary School wins embedded music competition. And Zimbabwe skydivers embark on a mission to pull in some new recruits. Just what happens to leftover foreskins from circumcision is causing a stir among superstitious men in Zimbabwe. Our reporter Jeffrey Moyo gives us the story. People in Harare are raising a stay over the cultural ethics of the disposal of foreskin after circumcision, demanding to know what happens to it after it is cut. ATV caught up with men who expressed concern over the disposal of their cut foreskins, fearing they could be bewitched or that their foreskin could be sold abroad for commercial purposes. Other men feared that their foreskin could be used for ritual purposes by some people without their approval. But others think differently and say the circumcision program is important in the fight against the HIV AIDS pandemic. I, I see no point. Kuti, why would you need a foreskin, your, your own foreskin after your cut one? It's, it, it's something nature to a waste, which is going to be thrown away. National Mail Circumcision Coordinator in the Ministry of Health and Child Welfare, Dr. Sinoktemba Kaba, allayed fears over the disposal of cut foreskin. All foreskins are, are bent within the hospital uh, premises because that's a, a a national requirement and it's actually a gazetted law of this country uh, that all uh, tissue products that are extracted when a person goes into hospital they are all bent so people should not be worried about that. Reports abound elsewhere of some research institutions and pharmaceutical companies using human foreskin for commercial purposes earning them millions of dollars. Reporting for ATV, I'm Jeffrey Moyo in Harare Zimbabwe. Residents in Kuwadzana are bitter over the incompletion of a local clinic. People are saying they are now tired of the lies from politicians and local authorities, which has gone on for 13 years. Jeffrey Moyo reports. Kuwadzana Extension Clinic has remained uncompleted for the last 13 years, compromising residents' access to health care services. ATV visited the suburb and caught up with the residents who are angry about the failure by the council to finish construction of the clinic. Tachuko kumpira kutide wanga wati wati gaziro clinic yoi wanwaya batlika no wachinda wapa nupaduse. So kutise wanu wanenge wane numbu kana watu wananguwa chiru wara nekune clinic yedu kufo. Saka tachuko kumpira kutide wanga wati clinic yoi muduse ya gaziru waya pera. Residents in the area said it is mainly women and children who are bearing the brand and are having to walk long distances to access health care services. Women in the suburb appeal to the responsible authorities to speed up the completion of the clinic. Tatine chiche mocho kutidae tatabati wapa kliniki ya kasro kufambao. Nukuti ya wani makore isi na chayati ya itwa ino kwa itwa bicha na bicha na saka tatichikumbiro kuru. Mende kutidae ya tatabati wapa. Wedwe kanza la masunda ano bowa. Ano kwanza kula kisa zimba shani. Ukwa kufa ya wana kapak. Ia ndo zaharu kwanza kutaise zimba za kipapo. Kutaa wana ugara kwa kandak. Pano kutaa sumu zire klinik. Hakwa nisi.
Women also complained about the huge amounts of money they spend whenever they want to access health care services elsewhere. Concerned residents said the clinic is now a white elephant and money was being wasted guarding the premises. Reporting for ATV, I'm Jeffrey Moyo in Harare, Zimbabwe. A primary school in Murewa district was crowned the best Jerusalem Mbede performing group at an event which was held recently at the Growth Points Culture Center. Jairo Saonyama gives us the report. Lombo Juku Primary School traditional dance group won the 2012 Jerusalem Mbende contest which was held recently at Murewa Cultural Center. The dance group beat eight other schools walking away with a floating trophy and 300 US dollars cash prize. People who spoke to ATV after the festival said the winning group had what it takes to win the competition. <laughs> The school also won the same title last year. The defenders are carry title to the Gorilla Pira. So I can't go far out to Anawedu. However, the group's trainer said the victory was a result of hard work and determination. The winners were ecstatic about their victory in this dance competition. The organizer said this year's edition of the dance competition was the toughest as compared to previous years. Uh, this year's Mbende uh, Jerusalem dance competition was tight and the winning schools deserved to win. Now, um, we also got uh, a very good professional group that we think uh, will assist uh, the schools next year to rehearse uh, and practice the Bende Jerusalem dance. Bende Jerusalem dance is a popular dance style practiced by the Zezuru Shona people living in the Murewa and Uzumba Maramba Fungwe areas. Reporting for ATV in Murewa, Zimbabwe. A Harare-based skydiving association has embarked on a mission to raise awareness on the sport and extend its appeal to the people of Zimbabwe. Robert Tafumane reports. The Zimbabwe Parachute Association is taking steps to popularize skydiving in the country to enable more people to be exposed to airborne performances and parachute jumps. Robert Bishop, chairman of the Zimbabwe Parachute Association, spoke about the development of the sport and efforts being made to popularize the sport. You'll find Zimbabwean skydivers all around the world. We don't do that much skydiving in Zimbabwe right now because it is very expensive. It costs $300 just to do a tandem dive. And that's the cost of the airplane. But generally around the world, it's always going to be the same price. Zimbabwe is going through, well, it has been through a very tough economic time. And what we're finding now is companies are stepping up to the market, they're sponsoring parachutes. We've got uh, EcoWeb, we've got OK Zimbabwe, we've got Delta Beverages. They've all come to the party and bought parachutes with their logos on. And these are the parachutes you'll see flying around today. Recently, the Zimbabwe Parachute Association successfully hosted a skydiving event at Gateway School, thrilling scores of people at the school. ATV had an opportunity to witness airborne performances and parachute jumps by skydivers. Um. Because your feet are dangling from the harness for so long, a lot of blood accumulates. So it's like when you land, you get like pins and needles. So that burns, but then, I mean, the massive crowd that you have here and, you know, the cheering that kind of blocks it out. Yeah, I think it's a very good sport. It's, uh, it's enjoyable, good, good uh, 
friendly environment. Um, yeah, as long as you like adrenaline, it's a great sport to do. Tom challenged those who want to take part in skydiving to do so as the sport is safe and offers an incredible experience. Do it. Big time. Yeah, get amongst it. I mean, it's such, it's just like an unbelievable experience. You'll never experience it unless you actually do it. You know, I mean, there's no other type of thing. Even like those uh, the wind tunnels that you can get into, it's nothing like that. I mean, sure, you get the feeling of uh, airborne, but actually falling through the air like that, it's a rush. Neo Bruce also says that he has been skydiving for the last 21 years and has enjoyed every moment. Too many, too many in 21 years to share with you, huh? but uh, always a lot of fun. Very, very safe sport if, you, if you're careful. In Zimbabwe, skydiving costs about $300 for three jumps, while the full course costs $1,200. Reporting for ATV in Harare, Zimbabwe. Thank you for joining us. Good night.